Good day, my OMT QM students, and welcome to the discussion of Lesson 5, Process Selection, Facility Layout, and Capacity Planning. This is Video 1. So I do hope that you had able to subscribe on my channel. If you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe now and comment done after watching the full video. At the end of this lesson, hopefully... My dear students, you will be able to determine the process appropriate for a business, decide when to make or when to buy, identify the layout conducive for the different processes or operating systems, and understand capacity planning, its kind and determinants of effective capacity. This video contains our online activity 5, so let me just remind you before watching this video, kindly study first our learning packet. Let us start with online activity 5. Make sure that you have your paper and pencil with you and kindly label your paper. I have here the diagram for process selection and systems design and this diagram shows the different activities that must be undertaken first before you could proceed with the process selection. So this diagram shows that forecasting, product and service design could be done simultaneously and it must be done before you could decide for the process to be implemented on producing your product. So this simply means that you must have first a clear forecast of the demand of your product using the different or any of the forecasting technique appropriate for your business and you must be final with regards to your product and service design. Then with that, you could now proceed with process selection and if you identify already the process, the steps, the different procedures, the different means on providing your products and services, you could now proceed with capacity planning, facilities and equipment, layout, and work design. Again, your product and service design must be final before you proceed with process selection. It is inappropriate and a waste of company's resources to go back and forth with uh, the product and service design, then the process, then there will be revision on the product, revise the process, then you go back again with the product because you have revisions on it, then there will be revision again on our process. So it will be a waste of time, waste of resources, waste of energy on the part of the management, on the part of the company. So that's the reason why there should be a final product and service design first before you could come up with the process selection. Let us start with online activity 5. Again, properly label your paper to avoid confusion. This is online activity 5 and Statements 1 to 4 will be answerable by true or false. This is statement number 1. Statement number 2, true or false. Statement number three. Statement number four. That's it for our first set. In process selection also, the company will decide whether to make or to buy the product. 
the customers are after the product or services they want and it is the duty of the company to provide them the product or the services. The management must weigh things whether to manufacture the product or to purchase it from other suppliers or what we call as to outsource it from other companies. To continue with our online activity 5, for the following questions, you're going to identify whether you're going to make or buy the product. So on your paper, your answer will either be make or buy. So this is the first statement. So of course, there are different factors or considerations before you come up with the decision to make or to buy the product. So let us say if you are on this situation, what do you think is the best decision for the company? Fill in the blanks. Make or buy. Number six. Then number seven, make or buy again. Number eight. Having those statements, we can say that there are different factors or considerations before we come up with the decision of making or manufacturing or buying the product. So if we have cost consideration, quality consideration, then uh, expertise in manufacturing the product and also the demand for our product, the capacity of our business, the resources available. So there are instances wherein we are capable of manufacturing the product but due to increase in demand of the product and we have to take advantage of that, there are times wherein the combination of this decision is being applied by the company. So some can be manufactured and then yung excess or yung kulang pa to meet the demand could be bought by the company. So in process selection, so what is important is that we meet the expectations of our clients or of our customers and also the company must provide the products or services or will come up with a decision that will minimize the cost of the company or of course that will maximize the profit of the organization. In process selection, we will decide whether we will use the automated process for our company. So instead of utilizing human effort or human labor, we will use equipment or machines or computers for our systems or production processes. So using automation that will bring greater efficiency and increase the production capacity and also it might as well reduce the cost of offering our products or services. In our automated process, the company could decide for the application of COM or computer-aided manufacturing. Under COM, there will be a computer program or a system that will accurately convert our product design into a format that the machines could read and could manufacture the product. COM is very much advantageous to companies with repetitive production it will bring fast and accurate production and machines could constantly give us the same product. But of course, for its disadvantages, COM is expensive to set up so it requires a higher investment and also it needs skilled workforce 
or different engineers in our production process. Another consideration for automated process is the use of flexible manufacturing system or the FMS. So this manufacturing method could be applied by the company if they want to adopt to changes in the nature or type or the quantity of their products. It is called flexible manufacturing system because it allows flexibility on our system to react to the different changes, whether those changes are predictable or unpredictable. Here are examples of automation on banking industry from over-the-counter transaction or OTC to ATM or the use of automated teller machine, online mobile internet banking. Then we have payments from cash or checks to electronic money. For restaurants, food industry, from kitchen hand or kitchen helpers. Now they are using automated kitchen tools. For industrial companies, from manual labor to robotics, our use of equipment, computer-aided manufacturing. So sa mga toll gates natin, from having a cashier to RFID or easy cash. Even in military, their arms and ammunitions were already converted into an automated one. So, hindi mo na kailangang magkasa ng bala, no? So, meron na silang mga automatic guns recoils ngayon. Then, for shipyard and aircraft manufacturing, since the product involved is a very large one, para talagang fit, no? Then, sa mga, yung mga sizes na mga i-assemble nila, at hindi sila mahirapan to inspect the product. They are using uh, equipment and computer-aided manufacturing. So, life support system sa medicine natin, it's just one of the example of automation in medicines. Then, we now have a very high-tech way to have photos or videos for entertainment. Then, in agriculture, na-convert na from traditional farming to using agricultural equipment so even in sports no hindi na natin minsan kailangan pa ng mga uh, mismong mga kapartner natin in persons or a team so we could conduct it virtually makakapag-practice tayo or we could be engaged in sports no virtually Included in process selection is the layout of our facility. So the choice of the layouts that we're going to apply will depend on the production system that a company is using. So based on our discussion in lesson one, we have the continuous production, the job shop or the unit production, and then we have the Project. And the types of layout conducive for those type of production system are here. We have the product layout, then process layout, and the fixed position layout. So to continue with our activity, for items 9 to 15, you're going to identify the type of layout applicable for the following companies or pictures that I'm going to show you. So again, your choices are product, process, or fixed position layout. Uh, examine the picture that I have here. So tell me if it is a product layout, process layout, or fixed position layout. So, this is number 10. Yan. So, yung mga mahilig sa mga unlimited. Yan. Mahilig kumain sa mga restaurants. So, usually, ganito yung flow ng services nila on how they provide the food. So, you will follow a certain route or pattern. So, how do we classify this type of layout? 
Then this one is number 11. So as you can see, there is no definite flow. Anything goes. The arrows are pointing from one to another. You can able to identify saan siya dumaan. So iba-iba yung kanyang dinaanan. So if we have this type of layout, so what do you think? So sa tingin nyo ba, they are producing standardized product, customized product, no? For you to properly identify if it falls under product layout, process layout, or fixed position layout. Okay, then for number 12, so we have here the beginning of our assembly. Then we have here our finished product and it follows series of steps with the general assembly line and the sub-assembly. So there are steps 1 to 13. Uh, it follows a definite flow. So how are you going to classify this layout? Is it product, process, or fixed position layout? Okay, so we have shipyard manufacturing. So if you will recall our discussion in lesson one, you could identify this process or this type of production. And with that, you could able to define the type of layout applicable for shipyard manufacturing. Will it be product, process, or fixed position layout? Okay, then for number 14, whether you're going to use a straight line layout or a U-shape layout. So as you can see here, you could identify the start of their line and the end of their line. And then also, if you will make a U-shape of it, you could arrange it this way. You have the starting point and the ending point having steps 1 up to step 9. Will that be a product, process, or fixed position layout? For number 15, so again, so as you can see here, a product may pass through different route or path before we could come up with our final product. So what do you think is the type of production system that we have here in number 15 and knowing the production system? you could identify the layout applicable for this. Will this be a product layout, a process layout, or a fixed position layout? So that ends our online activity 5. Google Form will be provided for its submission. And before I end this video, I would like to leave this statement with you. It's not what happened to you that's important, but what happened in you. So remember, there is always a lesson in the process. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you could able to submit our online activity 5. So see you on my next video.